Hi, Peter Charles here from Fly Fly Fishing. And today, let's talk about how to save money with our leaders and actually end up with better leaders. First off, let's talk about dry fly fishing and why we need to buy these uh, factory leaders with the factory tippet. Um, if you've cast any dry flies, you'll know that they have a lot of uh, drag, a lot of air resistance, and they're very, very light. So if you get, you know, flies like this, you know, there's so much resistance there when you try to cast them that you need a tapered leader like this one to get them to turn over properly. If you just try to use a, a straight piece of mono, it probably wouldn't work very well. The other aspect when it comes to dry fly fishing is the fact that trout, when they're looking up at the fly, can see the leader. So you want the finest leader they can get away with, which is the reason why high quality tippet costs uh, quite a bit of money, because uh, its strength uh, as a ratio of its diameter is actually higher than regular mono. So if you actually looked at the diameters of regular mono and tippet, you would find the tippet is a skinnier diameter for the same breaking strength. And that's important when we're dry fly fishing for trout. We want the maximum breaking strength we can get for the minimum diameter. So that's why you have to buy tippet spools. But that's for dry fly fishing. What happens when you're going fishing, let's say, with these bass flies, which all have beads or cones on them, or these steelhead and salmon flies that, you know, are relatively sparse tied on heavy hooks, or these streamers, same thing as the salmon flies. Do you need a tapered leader like that? Do you have to go to the expense of buying a tapered leader? And the answer to that is no. There are choices out there. You can go out and buy regular mono or regular fluorocarbon and build leaders out of them without going to the expense of buying tapered leaders because the tapered leader doesn't do much for you when you are casting these sorts of flies. Plus, you can build the tapering in yourself. So, for example, uh, my uh, personal favorite is uh, P-line fluorocarbon for tying streamers and wet fly uh, leaders. And these tippet spools, when they're empty, when, <laughs> when I've run out, I load my P-line onto the tippet spools, and I carry these tippet spools with me, and they're labeled according to the pound breaking strain of the P-line. And uh, I mean, get a load of this. This is 10 pound test. It's 250 yards, and it costs me 20 Canadian dollars. Okay, that, that's, a, that's a bargain, 250 yards. And this one is, I think, 30 yards, and it costs just as much. So that's the trade-off that you're getting. And you've got the spool here that you can use to load from this. So I keep these, I load these, and keep them in my steelhead gear. And so when I'm out fishing for steelhead, I'm building leaders out of this. So how do you build your leader once you've decided to, you know, instead of buying the expensive stuff, go with, you know, spools of mono, spools of fluorocarbon, how do you go about building your leader? Well, that's fairly straightforward. Uh, it's a very simple uh, formula I use. I never use one straight piece of, of mono or fluorocarbon. And the reason for that is, first off, you know, you do need some turnover help even with these flies. The other issue is if I snag up and break off, I could break off at the loop end, not the fly end, and I'd lose the whole thing. So I always use a, a stronger material for a butt section and then a weaker material for a tippet section to attach the fly. So if I break off at the tippet knot, I'm losing, you know, a foot or two foot, and I'm not littering the bottom of the river full of uh, fluorocarbon. My average leader can be up to 20 feet long for, um, you know, fishing these steelhead flies uh, with, a, say, a scanty head. And I might uh, set it up with 60% butt material, which is usually 20 pound or 15 pound fluorocarbon. And then I step down in equal uh, measures. So I t take that remaining 40% and basically split up in two or three sections, stepping it down. So I might go from 20 to 15 to 12 to 10. And that gives me, uh, say, a 15 foot leader or a 20 foot leader. And I'm able to uh, get good turnover with that. It turns over just fine. And uh, it fishes extremely well. Now, as far as knots are concerned, you're thinking to yourself, 
Well, if I do a four-part leader, I mean, that's three knots. And the blood knot is a pain. I don't like to do blood knots. Well, use a triple surgeon's knot. There's a, there's a number of advantages to the triple surgeon's knot. It's very fast. Unlike the double surgeon's knot, it lays flat. It looks a bit like a blood knot when, you, when you're finished with it. And the other thing is the, with the double surgeon's knot, your leader sort of goes off at an angle. And with the triple, it's straight. So I would use the triple surgeon's knot. It's plenty strong enough. And I not had knot failures once I started tying it correctly. And you know you can use that with this P line, and you're in business. Uh, same thing for trout streamer fishing. You know you can build the same kind of leaders. The shorter the leader, the less segments you need. So if you're dealing with a, a four or five foot leader, you might only need two segments. If I'm going around ten, I might go with three segments. If I'm going fifteen or more, I'll go up to four segments. It's it's just the idea of that you you're getting a little bit more turnover force by building the taper into the leader and starting with a thicker butt section. So if I was going after uh, trout with the streamer, I might, and uh, I was going off of a sinking line, so I might have, let's say, a seven foot leader. I might have, you know, a butt section of 12 pound and, and a, uh, a tippet section of eight pound, and that would be it. I'd be fine. And if I'm going after, I'm always using fluorocarbon because it sinks better. It, uh, I'm, in my own test, it sinks about four times faster than mono. And I've actually had the experience of watching a mono leader hold up in the current. Uh, in, it was a very flat pool with just a slow current. I cast out, my sink tip went down, my fly went down, and, and there was the mono still stuck in the surface film. Of course, once it came under tension, that pulled out and sank. But for the first part of the drift, there was my mono stuck in the surface tension. So that's why I always use fluorocarbon for my uh, wet fly or uh, my uh, streamer leaders because it sinks and it gets down and doesn't remain stuck in the surface tension. And that's critical if you're using a very light fly. If I'm using a very light trout wet fly, I, that could stay stuck in the surface tension until it really gets around in the drift. So for a good chunk of your drift, it may not get down. And uh, you know, watch that next time you use a mono leader with a sinking fly. Uh, and watch how the mono will hold it up. So, to recap, you know, you need these expensive tapered leaders and the tippet when you're dry fly fishing. But once we get away from dry fly fishing, you have options. You can continue to use these, no problem. If you want to use them, go for it. No, no arguments there. I mean, they're great leaders. They work beautifully. And this expensive tippet material is definitely stronger than standard mono or standard fluorocarbon, according you know when we uh, factor in its uh, diameter. But once you get away from that kind of trout fishing, and you're getting into these heavier flies or bigger flies, and you're fishing for bass, you're fishing for carp, you're fishing for uh, you know steelhead, salmon, whatever it is, saltwater species, striped bass, you can go to building your leaders out of this stuff. And instead of paying 20 bucks for 30 yards, you're paying 20 bucks for 250 yards. You know, the penalty is that it's a, the diameter is a little bit bigger. But other than that, it's fine. So keep that in mind the next time you go out looking for leaders. Cheers.